Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Even if you do a great job of getting it right at the source, meaning recording great sounding tracks, there are still going to be problems that you need to address during mixing. One of the biggest problems people face, especially early on in your mixing journey, is muddiness. Today I'm going to share with you three of the main culprits that cause this muddiness and a simple tool you can use today to hunt them down. If you like what you see here on the channel, you'll love my five-step mix guide. You can have it for free, just use the link on the screen. Otherwise, let's dive in. First, let's talk about the obvious culprits and what we're actually trying to accomplish when we're getting rid of muddiness. The obvious culprits for muddiness are things like the bass guitar, kick drum, and really almost all rhythm instruments like guitar and piano especially. Uh, bass guitar and kick drum, those are supposed to have a lot of low end, but they can also have muddiness to them. And then instruments like guitar and piano have lots of frequencies and lots of notes, but there usually is a little bit of muddiness underneath those. And if you're not careful, they can be one of the culprits that cause your mix to sound muddy. So what's the goal here? Is the goal to get rid of all low frequencies in our mix? No, of course not. Is the goal to get rid of all the low mid frequencies? No, although that is where a lot of the muddiness resides. The goal is for balance. So if I'm listening to a mix and I'm hearing all the different frequency ranges, but I'm hearing more here in the low mids, then that's the problem. We need to address that. We need that low mid area to be balanced with everything else. Not equal, not exactly the same, but not out of balance. So initially raw tracks in their kind of un -EQ'd state will tend to have a buildup down here in the low mids, probably more than anything else. So if we don't address that, we'll end up with a muddy mix. So the first place I look when I'm feeling like things are muddy are the more obvious culprits like bass drum, bass guitar, and guitars and pianos in general. What about the not so obvious culprits? I didn't play you any audio examples in the last section because everyone knows what a bass guitar sounds like and that it can be muddy. But if you deal with those, you can still have muddiness in your mixes. So where does that muddiness come from? I've got three places where I find them quite regularly. The first and kind of surprising place is in the vocal. Here's a session, I've turned off all the plugins and I've put a Pro EQ plug in here on the main output so we can roll off all the top end and just hear what's happening in the lows. But here is, let me play you a little vocal uh, coming into the chorus here. They're on to something. Yeah, they're on to something. So initially you hear that and you think, okay, it's a, it's a vocal, right? Sounds good, sounds warm, which we like, right? Actually, listen to how much low end is still in this raw vocal. There's a lot in the low mids, like 100 hertz range, but even way down at like 40 hertz, like when I first start singing, there's just a burst of whoa, deep low end. Most lots of tracks have that, especially a vocal. If we want a warm sounding vocal, which we do, typically that comes with a little extra low end that we don't need. So by managing this low end, rolling it off, using EQ, we can get the vocal to still sound full and warm and bright and all those great words without it causing that kind of womp, 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 muddy sound. Now, the next thing that can be kind of an unsuspected culprit are things like overhead mics or room mics on drums. A lot of times we think of it's just the kick and the snare that are causing all the thickness, but overheads can have a lot of low end in them as well. Check out these overheads here. Those actually sound pretty bright. So you listen to that and say, oh, okay, it's a nice bright, it's got the overheads, the brightness of the snare, we're good to go. But in certain situations, the low end that's there that may not be as obvious can start to build up and cause your mix to sound muddy. Here's what that low end sounds like. M -m -m my it sounds like my Shiroda. Um, but there's a lot there. It's not tons, it's not excessive. It's probably not gonna be a problem in this specific mix, but it can be, so always pay attention. I'm not saying there shouldn't be thickness in your overheads, but there can be excessive thickness there, especially if the overheads are lower and not higher. It can get a lot more of that low end from the kick and the snare. So you wanna be aware that there's some there that needs to be managed. Third place uh, that doesn't seem very obvious is really heavily distorted and bright sounding guitars. Um, here are all the guitars in this song, specifically like over here, like in this chorus section. Now, 
uh, as a guitar player myself, I love testing out guitars and amps and pedals and having that have this big, beefy, huge low end that you feel in your chest. It's nice in the room. It's terrible in the mix. Listen to how much low end is here that if we don't take out is going to cause all kinds of muddiness in our mix. It almost sounds like a bass guitar and a kick drum. Those stabby kind of eighth notes, doom, 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 doom. It almost goes thump, 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 thump. Imagine that competing with your actual kick drum and actual bass guitar. That's no bueno. Doesn't mean the guitars were poorly recorded. It just means that to get a nice big, huge guitar part, sometimes there's going to be extra low end that we want to tame down a little bit. Okay, now I want to share with you the sneakiest culprit of all. This is one that plagues people and occasionally it gets me, even though I know I should be looking out for it. And it's simply this, the effects sends that we use, like reverb and delay, sometimes those can be the source of muddiness and it's really hard to find it. What do I mean by that? So for example, here is a solo guitar part. So it's just a lead guitar right here. And I've got it routed to a reverb and to a delay plugin. So this is common for uh, reverbs and delays on vocals, even on like drums or really any instrument. It's pretty common to take that, send it off to a reverb or a delay somewhere else. So if we scroll over to the right in this session, we'll see this is the reverb and this is the delay that we're sending to. So if we listen to the guitar by itself, it sounds like this. <laughs> So it's pretty bright. It doesn't have a ton of low end there in the raw guitar. But listen to what happens when we add in that delay and that reverb that we've got on sends on this guitar. It's cool because it's stereo and big and awesome. But what if we just soloed those that reverb and that delay? What if we just listen to the reverb and the, the delay? What will we hear? And now just the low end. That's fascinating to me. That's an example of, in different scenarios, if this was a more rhythm guitar that you sent to a big reverb that you liked, you could have the rhythm guitar sounding great, and that reverb can introduce, I don't know how, but it introduces low frequencies that resonate and cause this woo -woo 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 sort of a sound, that you'll be EQing the main guitar thinking that's the culprit, or I find this happens a lot with vocals. The vocal sounds nice and bright and clean, but it's the reverb or the delay that's over here on Ascend that is actually causing the muddiness. So the solution is to EQ the reverb and the delay, as you can see in my template here. I always have EQ uh, following my reverbs and my delays to prevent this from happening because it happens so often. So what's the best way to hunt these down? How do we find these pockets of muddiness? Do we just go through and solo every track in our session until we hear something muddy? Nope. That'll actually cause you to fix problems that aren't actually problems. Here's how you do it. You use the lowly mute button. That's right. Listen to your entire mix. And if you think this sounds muddy, start the process of elimination. Mute your top suspect. Let's say bass guitar. You mute that. If it still sounds muddy, then you realize the bass wasn't the problem or wasn't the only problem. Then mute a guitar a specific guitar, and then another. And you just keep kind of playing this game, going down and muting track after track until the problem you're hearing disappears. More often than not, I've found, it's really just one track or maybe a pair of tracks that are causing mo most of the muddiness that I hear. And what happens is I'm listening, I'm like muddy, 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 muddy. Ah, it went away. And now I know exactly who was causing the problem, and I can go fix that. Then if I go back to everything and it still sounds a little bit muddy, I can do the process again and figure out who else was contributing to the muddiness, because obviously there can be more than one culprit. But this is hands down the easiest and fastest way to find where the actual muddiness lives. Remove it 
and then you'll hear it disappear, and now you know where to find it. Versus soloing everything and guessing, is this the problem? I don't know. Here's how you know. Obviously, a big part of our job as mixing engineers is solving problems. That's why step three of my five-step mixing process is devoted to this problem-solving process. If you haven't checked out my five-step mix guide, you want to learn the other four steps, you can have that guide for free. Just go to fivestepmix.com, enter your email, and I will send it to you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.